The Cod Wars were a series of confrontations in the 1950s and 1970s between the United Kingdom and Iceland regarding fishing rights in the North Atlantic. The conflict ended in 1976 when the United Kingdom accepted a 200 nautical mile Icelandic exclusive fishery zone. Iceland's population was at the time almost exclusively dependent on fishing as a source of income. The Third Cod War, November 1975 to June 1976, occurred between the United Kingdom and Iceland. Iceland had declared that the ocean, up to 200 nautical miles or 370 kilometers from its coast, fell under Icelandic authority. The British government did not recognize this large increase to the exclusion zone, and as a result, there came to be an issue with the British fishermen and their incursion into the disputed zone. The conflict, which was the most hard fought of the Cod Wars, saw British fighting trawlers have their nets cut by the Icelandic Coast Guard and there were several incidents of ramming by Icelandic ships and British trawlers, frigates and tugboats. Iceland achieved its overall aims to the detriment of the already declining British fisheries, severely affecting the economies of northern fishing ports in the United Kingdom such as Grimsby, Hull and Fleetwood. A multi-million pound compensation deal and apology were granted by the British government in 2012 for fishermen who lost their livelihoods in the 1970s. More than 35 years after the workers lost their jobs, the 1,000 pound compensation offered to 2,500 fishermen criticized for being insufficient and exclusively delayed. I'm sitting here with Flossi. Hi Flossi. Hi. And you're going to tell us all about the Cod War. Um, I'll try to, yeah, sure. Uh, so what what have you studied? Why do you know so much about the Cod War? Well, to begin with, uh, I remember it actually from my youth. I'm, I'm that old, so the truth is out. But uh, I remember it from my youth, and I was very interested in it as a kid. And uh, I'm studying history right now, and I'm actually read, writing my, um, my final thesis about the Cod War. And so... For our listeners who know nothing, maybe, about the Cod War, can you tell us some of the basics, and then we'll go into further details. Yeah, well, as the name implies, it was a fishing or fisheries dispute between uh, Iceland and mainly the U- United Kingdom, but there were also other nations involved, like West Germany, Belgium, but mainly the United Kingdom. And uh, the term Cod War, there was, it was a British journalist that coined the term in typical British humor, because this was in the middle of the Cold War. And uh, there were many who thought that this dispute was uh, a bit ridiculous, maybe a bit laughable, and uh, so therefore this name. But uh, despite that, it was also very serious, because um, the war term was attached to it because the, the the Royal Navy actually sent warships to protect the um, British trawlers from the Icelandic Coast Guard. So um, the, the Royal Navy was trying to stop the Icelandic Coast Guard from harassing the trawlers. Why exactly were they harassing the trawlers? Well, it started with uh, that Iceland did extend its uh, economic zone. Uh, first to uh, yeah, the exclusive economic zone, first in, uh, well, first in 1952 uh, to four, four miles. And that's not really considered a war because the Royal Navy did not send any warships then, but there were, uh, there were blockades in, in British harbors. But uh, the first Cod War was in 1958 to 1961, and the Royal Navy sent some frigates to try and stop the uh, Coast Guard vessels and uh, the only way the Coast Guard vessels in the first Cod War could stop the trawlers was was, uh, either just appearing and threatening or trying to board the vessels, which was uh, difficult and dangerous. But we usually talk about three Cod Wars. The first one, 58 to 61, the second one, 72 to 73. In the second one, the Icelanders had actually uh, a new very simple but powerful weapon called um, called the warp cutter and to describe it is it is ridiculously simple really it's just a metal rod with some knives at the end and this was enough if you put this in the water and um, you would sail across the nets 
and you could cut the wires so the nets of the trawlers would actually just sink to the ground and that was a huge financial loss for the trolling company. Usually trawlers did only have uh, at the most one extra net so if they lost both of them the only thing they could do was sail home so this was very troublesome. So again the Royal Navy appeared and tried to stop the the, the gunboats like they call, called them, the Coast Guard vessels. What, what were you saying about the recording um, of the distress signals? Or the well, that's what the Icelanders say. I've never heard the British really acknowledge this. Um, maybe because it was would also make them look a little... Yeah, well, the Icelanders say that they listen to broadcast. The uh, frigates used to broadcast messages. The, for example, uh, this is Andromeda, which was a frigate. Uh, we have just seen the Coast Guard vessel Odin leave port here, and everybody would say, yeah, we received it, thank you very much, and over. And, and the Icelandic Coast Guard vessels would uh, actually uh, record this and broadcast it, broadcast it maybe days later just to cause great confusion and, and uh, eventually they, they stopped doing these broadcasts, it didn't work. And so what effect did this have maybe on um, like the UK you're saying? It mainly did affect uh, the towns in the, um, the east like Hull and Grimsby where would they had been uh, sending trawlers for many many years to Iceland and, and actually the livelihood of many families dependent, uh, depended on this so it did really affect those areas much, the rest not so much and in the end actually and the British gave in and all three caught wars it ended with the British giving in to the Icelandic demands. So Iceland won the Cod War? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you can say that, yeah. What was cod being used for? Oh, just human consumption, I believe you call it. It was a uh, very popular, mostly the British were fishing cod, the Germans were mostly after other types of fish, but the uh, cod was, I mean, fish and chips, British fish and chips. The cod is the main ingredient, so that's important. There was also, people often say that uh, this is where Icelandic stubbornness met old English imperialism or, or the dying old empire of Britain. This was like, I mean, they had just beat, beaten Germany in the Second World War, and just a few years later, the second biggest navy in the world is is just told by this a few patrol boats around this cold island in the North Atlantic go go away and of course they didn't want to listen to that but in the end the uh, Icelandic stubbornness may be won but we will see if it's gonna hit us if it's gonna stab us in the back because I don't think if there's gonna be another fishing dispute uh, this method of just uh, saying no 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 and uh, go home, it's not going to work. So what's up now? Is it mackerel wars? I hope not, but uh, we have seen in recent years that uh, there's still tendency to to fight over fishing. And But I have to add that in, the, in this dispute, in the Cod Wars, Iceland had a very powerful ace, or trump card, which was the, uh, the na military base in Keplavik. And uh, Iceland is a founding ma member of NATO. And so actually, UK and Iceland, they were uh, allies in the middle of the Cold War. This didn't look really good. And uh, to the glee of the Soviet Union and the, the, the communist states, they watched with delight while this was taking place. And this was al also very embarrassing for uh, the Americans who had a military base here and had promised to protect Iceland if... I mean, the NATO treaty is about that if one country is attacked, then the others have to respond. And the Icelanders were constantly saying, we we see this as, a, as an attack. The British are sending the Navy here to threaten us. You have to do something, but of course that was difficult. But Iceland could threaten to close off this uh, military base or even leave the alliance completely. And it actually got so heated in 1976 that uh, Iceland did uh, break off diplomatic relations with the UK. 
And if I remember correctly, I think that's the only time that Iceland has ever broken off diplomatic relations with any country, at least a country that's so close in terms. I mean, England and Iceland have always had, or Britain, Great Britain and Iceland have always had uh, um, good trade relations. And, uh, yeah. Icelanders often tend to confuse the uh, exclusive economic zone, zone sorry, which is uh, 200 miles, with the territorial waters, which is only 12 miles. And uh, territorial waters is uh, where Iceland governs, or I'm not an expert in it myself, but, uh, but the exclusive economic zone is, um, is, uh, extends to 200 miles from, uh, from, from Iceland. Or more basically from the uh, the ground, actually, um, like uh, I don't really know the term for it, but uh, <coughs> it's kind of complicated how they uh, work this out. But the history about it is that uh, Iceland eventually knew that they were probably going to win this because um, this idea of a 200-mile limit of an exclusive economic zone was gaining much ground with other nations and uh, some have actually pointed out that the British were a bit hypocritical maybe concerning this because uh, in many ways it would also benefit Britain to have this 200 mile um, exclusive economic zone. So just a question with the EU now this is like the hot topic here in Iceland and a lot of people are saying there's um, that, no, that joining the EU would ruin the fish industry. What do you think of that? Well, what do I think? Yeah, it's a uh, well in in light of if you look at history and, and the Cod Wars, for example, it's uh, we I think we should be very careful when we think about how we are gonna how we're gonna deal with this. I mean, uh, there's al we always hear these horror stories about, yeah, if we join the EU, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the British, everybody is going to send their whole fishing fleet and fish and everything dry. I think that's a bit stretched. And uh, the 200-mile uh, exclusive economic zone, uh, Iceland has uh, is obligated to actually look after the uh, fishing stocks within these limits. So uh, if Iceland would say I mean, we, we are concerned about the fishing stocks. I, I, th I think the, um, the European Union do, would uh, listen to that advice. I mean, who else would know anything more about that than, than Iceland, actually? But uh, I, th I think when, if it comes to that, that we have to uh, deal or make a deal about fishing around Iceland, we have to be very careful. And so how did you come to become so interested in the Cod War? I'm just, I don't know, I'm just so inflated, uh, I'm so, no, not inflated, I'm so interested in conflict, basically, yes. and, and in history that's mostly what I'm always reading about, war or some international relations, maybe because I don't understand it really, I, I find things I don't really understand very interesting. And Flote, you're a musician, are you going to be writing about the Cod War in your next songs? Ah, uh, <laughs> that sounds very lame. No, I don't think so. No, no. and basically, and also, and nobody would know what I'm singing about. It's uh, interesting how few people know about the Cod War. I just asked an English friend of mine who's from the area around Bristol if he knew anything about the Cod War. He just stared at me with a blank face. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. So if you go to England today, mo or Great Britain, uh, most people don't know what you're talking about if you mention the Cod War. Even young Icelandic people mm -hmm. believe it took place in the 19th century or something. It's just, it's so far back for some people. But I, I think we should uh, remember the Cod War. And, uh, like we were saying about the mackerel dispute, maybe this is something we should read more about and, and, and learn from, actually. But no, I'm not going to write a song about the Cod War. I'm just focused on writing about the same things as uh, uh, turmoil in my own so soul and uh, angst and, uh, and something depressed, depressive. Uh, that sells. What about depressed cod? Depressed cod, yeah. oh yeah, you say, well, that's an idea. I, I think actually that would be a better name for a band, actually. Yeah. Depressed cod. Uh, no, <laughs> depressed cod. Hey, that's an idea. Yeah.
Depressed card. Yeah. Card depression. Thank you, Florce, so much for talking to us about the Cod Wars. Um, where can people read more about it? Do you have any good literature, or should we just all go to the harbor and look for people that have been in the Cod War to tell us about it? Or is there a book? Oh, there are several books in Icelandic, not so many in English, but uh, if you Google the Cod Wars, you will find lots of essays, for example, um, of Icelandic historians. Guðni T. H. Johannesson has... Uh, done lots of research on this matter and um, there's an interesting book I think it's difficult to get a hold of uh, called the Royal Navy in the Court Wars uh, written by a former member of the Royal Navy and there we could see the uh, the British viewpoint and I found that so interesting to see the British viewpoint it's so so different and uh, that's why I'm writing about this now and to try to see the different viewpoints and in um, in light of that, thinking about what is true, what is truth, and historical perspective, and things like that. There's also a book called Cod, no, that has something about the Cod Wars, maybe a bit. No. Yeah, yeah, I haven't read it. There's a book called Cod, and it has been actually translated in Icelandic. It's, it's just it's about the history of cod, the fish, and how it how it has always and its human relation, if you could say so. And it's been a very important fish, and, and rightly so. It's 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 delicious. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us today, Flosse. Uh, and I look forward to reading more about the cod wars. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>